Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teresa, this is Lost My Thread. Today I'm gonna to be sharing what I made in the months of February and March. I mentioned this in my last video, but I recently hit 5,000 subscribers on my channel. Thank you again to everyone who is subscribed. I decided to do a 5K Q&A, so I'm doing a question and answer video soon. I have put a post up in my community tab if you haven't seen it, or you can always leave a question down in the comments below this video, or send me a message over on Instagram. I've had a few over on Instagram as well as here, and I'll be putting that together soon. But let me get into my February and March makes. I feel like this is long overdue just in my own mind. I was planning to do a February makes video, but I just didn't end up having time. And in the end, February and March were both relatively slow months for me as far as my sewing, because there were a lot of other things going on in my life. At the beginning of February, I got sick with COVID-19 and I was really pretty much out of commission for the first two weeks of February. But I will say I wasn't really my fully functional self until probably the last week of March. So I feel like everything's been in a little bit of a lull Adding to that, if you guys have seen my April Fool's video, my late night thread video, that was an intense two to three weeks at the end of March that I was working on that as well. So it just did not leave a whole lot of time for sewing. But when I put the two months together, there's a fair bit that I wanna share with you guys and I'm looking forward to telling you what I've been making. I have actually made some separate videos about some of the things I'm talking about, so I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail if I've already talked about them. But the first thing I wanna share with you are some t-shirts. They were the first thing that I made in February. They are three Concord tees. They're all the same t-shirt, Concord tee by Cashmere my go-to t-shirt but they all have different designs on them. So these were designed by me using my Cricut Joy. I made a whole video talking about what it was like to make these designs. This one is kind of probably my favorite and I think it's a bit of a sewist favorite as well. These are the line drawings of the Concord tee, so the same pattern, the pattern pieces that make this t-shirt designed on top of the t-shirt, which I think is just super cute and really fun. I love how all the designs came out, but I wanna talk to you a bit about the sewing process because I didn't talk about that in my video about these t-shirts before. I made all these t-shirts from fabric from the Fabric Godmother. The navy blue one I made in a really lovely cotton modal jersey fabric. I really do love the feel of it. It has a nice little bit of weight and movement. It feels super lightweight. I don't know if you can see that texture. There's like a slubby texture to it that I really like as well. This one I really did like working with. I like wearing. I could see myself making more t-shirts out of that in the future. And then I also made some out of this charcoal gray. It's a poly cotton jersey. I felt like it would be interesting to try a different kind of a textile, see what I thought of it. I will say the poly cotton, I like the charcoal and has just ever so slightly marred look to it, but it's not as smooth. I will say it's a little bit rougher. I wouldn't say it's like proper rough. It's just not as soft and smooth as the other jerseys that I often will lean to. So it also didn't have as much stretch, which made it a little bit more challenging putting the neckband in. I have to say I had neckband issues on all three of these t-shirts. And that is no fault of the neckband, that is all down to me. When I was sewing these up, I was proper sick with COVID-19. I was barely getting off the couch and I decided I wanted to try and push myself and do some sewing, mainly because I know I got so much out of it and I felt like, I'll just feel a little better if I can do something nice, if I can do something for me. I can sew some t-shirts, that's nothing. I could sew t-shirts in my sleep which may be true, but I may end up with some messed up necklines because that is definitely what happened when I made these t-shirts. Now I will say that I have been thinking and I've been planning that whenever I'm making anything with a, ne a neckband, like a stretch neckband, I am gonna use the pattern piece as a guide of how long that piece should be because really depending on how stretchy your fabric is, it might need to be longer, it might need to be shorter in order for it to sit flat and look nice and neat. And I knew that before I made this project, I'd been thinking that, but I wasn't thinking straight when I was sick. And I just cut out the neckband as instructed. And all these fabrics were not as stretchy as the pattern I think would have intended for that neckband. And so they were all too short. And I ended up cutting them all out and redoing them again, considering I'd put them all in on my serger as well, because I am a straight to serger for a neckband kind of lady. I know some of you guys love to base them in place and you are probably more wise than me in many ways, but life's too short. I go straight to the serger, rarely have regrets. But this was definitely an instance where, I wouldn't say I regretted it, but I was definitely kicking myself a little bit for not considering that it was not gonna be fitting because I was having to stretch it way too much to get it in place. 
This one I feel like still doesn't sit as flat as I would like. I do think when I give it a good steamy press and when I'm wearing it, it's not as obvious as it is on the hanger, but it still bothers me. Also, this neckband, I don't know if you'll be able to see, it's definitely not very even. It's thicker at points, thinner at points. This is the t-shirt of a woman who is very ill, should be nowhere near a sewing machine, but she wanted to do something and she was doggone pleased that she did. So no regrets. I got a total wearable t-shirt out of it, but all of them were really challenging neckbands. This one I ended up having to piece together because I didn't have enough left to cut out a whole new neckband piece. I ended up having to piece together. So there's a couple of seams on the neckband that I don't think you would ever see unless you were really looking for them. So I don't think it's an issue for when I'm wearing it, but it's just something that I know and I feel like they're imperfect. They're good, they're wearable, and I was really happy to be able to actually do something productive and do something nice whilst I was really sick, even if I had to take breaks, and I am happy that I made them. The next thing to tell you about is my second Marlo cardigan by True Bias, the Marlo sweater by True Bias. I made one back in January that I really loved and I have been wearing so, so much. I wanted to make a more cropped version though. The first one I made is I made it kind of like between the crop length and the full long length. And I really do like that length, but I felt like there's a lot of things where I'm wearing something that cinches in a bit at the waist. If I'm wearing like a dress that's a bit more fitted at the waist, or if I'm wearing a top that's a bit more cropped, I felt like a cropped cardigan would make more sense and I wouldn't lose my shape as much with it. I will say when I made this up, I could have cropped it even more by a couple of inches, but that's just because for me, my waist is quite high on my torso. So I feel like that's just something to for me, not necessarily gonna be the case for everybody. I still love how it looks and I think it's really cute and oversized and I like the combination of the cropped and oversized at the same time. So this is the sweater. I may have already put some pictures up of me in it. I really love this fabric. It's a really cool, interesting fabric I got from Guthrie and Ghani. I wanted something that was like a textured knit and I really like this one. It looks knitted. It looks like you've knitted it on the outside. The inside is quite different though. It's got this really interesting, it's like a cotton jersey, it almost feels like the inside of a or the outside of a sweatshirt. It's really warm as well because you have two layers of fabric. There's two layers going through. It keeps you surprisingly warm. It had a decent amount of stretch to it. I feel like it was a really good choice for this particular cardigan. I made this cardigan as part of a sewing meetup with a couple of my sewing friends. So I've been organizing some meetups with two of my sewing friends. One is Annette, who you might have seen on Late Night Thread. And another one is someone named Izzy. We've met at London sewing meetups. And we've been getting together, having sewing dates where we sew, we chat, we have snacks, we listen to music, we hang out. And it's a ton of fun. And the first time we were doing it was in February and we wanted to make the same project. We all thought it'd be fun to make the same thing. So we all picked the same thing because I'd made one and loved it, wanted another one. And both my friends had not made it before and thought it would be a good project. When I was going around to my friend Annette's house, she is brand new to sewing. She'd only sewn two things before this project. She doesn't have a serger. So I decided I was gonna make this entirely on my sewing machine just to demonstrate that you can make jersey things, you can make stretch fat or stretch clothes on a sewing machine, you don't necessarily need a serger. But I will say as a result, I don't love the finish as much on this one. I like a serged edge on a knit project. So it's just a little bit more rough and ready looking. It's not gonna fray because it is jersey, but it's just not as neat as I would have liked. But you know, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't, it's not visible. It doesn't flap open when I'm wearing it, but I'm just conscious that it just doesn't look as neat. Also around the neckband, I kind of did the cheater option and just stitched it in place rather than doing the nice neat finish where this is folded under and stitched down again. So that's my fault that I chose not to do that in the proper way that they recommend. So on the whole, it's a little bit more of a rough project, but I'm still really happy with it. I love the buttons that I got for this one. So these came from Textile Guard and I actually had a few button or two button options I had to decide between, but I think this was definitely the right one. There's this really cool two-toned effect on there. I feel like it's the right size. I feel like it's a really good style for this cardigan. This one has been a really great one, has been going with tons of things already in my wardrobe. So I know that this is one that I'm gonna be wearing again and again as well.
The next thing I sewed in February were these trousers. These are the Jude Jeans by Closet Core Patterns. This is one that I've made a whole separate video on as well, so I'll put a link to that up there if you wanna see a full pattern review and I tell you all about making these trousers. But this is one that I essentially made in a day. I got really excited about it, wanted to make them up within a week of ordering, and I had a day off, I think this was some annual leave, and I decided I was gonna try and see how much of these jeans I could sew up in one day and I more or less finished them. I think I had a few finishing details to do on the second day, but it was such a fun project to put together. I love the style of these trousers. They are a full on proper bell bottom jean. They are a skinny jean, very high waisted. I love where they hit on the waist. I love the shape that I got for them. I love that they've got these really cool authentic 70s patch pockets on the front and the back as well. I think they are super cute. And I very much do wanna make more of these trousers. These have been so much fun to wear. I forgot how much fun it is to wear like a full bell bottom at the bottom of your trouser. So when you're moving around, you feel the air circulating and they move around around you. If you know, you know, if you like it, you like it, but I'm definitely a fan of it. And these have been so fun to wear and I will definitely be making more of these in the future. And now moving into March, I only finished a couple of things in March. The first one I'll tell you is the one that I'm wearing right now. So this is the Valdivia sweater by Elisa Threads. This is my second version of this sweater. I really love it. This fabric came from the fabric swap that was in London. I made a video about the fabric swap where I picked up a few things. It's like a marled green. It's a rib knit. This one I will say was super quick to put together. This was a project that I made in my March sewing date with my sewing friends. We actually decided to get together and do some sewing on the 17th of March, which is St. Patrick's Day. That wasn't the intention, but I felt like, well, I gotta sew some green on St. Patrick's Day, right? I mean, come on, how could you not? And this is a project that I'd had in mind of making another one of these sweaters, and this seemed like a really good fabric choice for it. I think in general it turned out really well. I've been getting really into my green lately. I don't know what's going on, but I've been really loving greens. And this is a really lovely green and it goes with so many things that are in my wardrobe. I'd made this Valdivia sweater before, but this is another one like my Marlowe cardigan. I wanted to make a more cropped one. My main thinking with this is that that way I could layer it over dresses to have that kind of dress looking like a skirt look. And I think it's so perfect for that. I feel like it works really well. Again, I like that it's quite oversized in the body and then it's a bit cropped. So even if it's a bit big around the waist, you can still see my waist shape when I have something a bit more fitted underneath it. And I think it is super cute. The main feature of this really though is these sleeves. These sleeves are just wonderful. You have these really big voluminous sleeves. I will say that they are really cozy and warm. I, on my first version, I was not expecting to enjoy wearing that sweater so much. But with all this extra fabric you have here, it just feels really cozy around the wrists. And it's also really great because there's so much fullness here in the sleeve. You can wear this layered over quite puffy sleeves as well and it all fits in there and it's not bunchy or uncomfortable at all. I think this is a really good shape and silhouette on me in general, but I will say that for me, because I have a fuller bust and I didn't do any full bust adjustments, I know, I should have done, I didn't do. It's just a little bit more cropped in the front than it is on the rest of the body, which I think kind of looks like it could be intentional and it's kind of a cute look, but it's not what I'm going for. And also as a result, the front of it is just a little bit too short for me to be able to be wearing with just like t-shirts, unless I have a super high-waisted trouser or skirt going with them. But you know, it's not the end of the world. I feel like this is really cute as it is. It worked in the ways that I intended it to, but in future versions, I'll just bring the front of it down just a little bit just to level it out. But I think it turned out great. The one thing I will say that was just really frustrating and disappointing when I was cutting this out is that there was clearly a fault on the fabric. So I picked this up at a fabric swap where I only brought fabrics that I thought were in excellent quality to be able to share with my fellow sewing friends but this one actually had some holes going along one of the edges, but they weren't right at the edge. I would say they were probably about maybe two, three inches from the edge of the fabric, and I didn't spot them initially, and when I was cutting pieces out, I saw one and thought, oh, let me just work around that, and then I saw there were more as the fabric was going on, which meant that in the end, I didn't have enough fabric to cut out the sleeves as intended because I was having to steer things away from the edge of the fabric. So I actually ended up cutting the sleeves on the cross grain rather than on grain. I don't think it matters. I think it works absolutely fine. They don't need to stretch. Nobody's gonna be particularly noticing. But it did also mean that I didn't have quite the full pieces. So 
For one of them, somewhere around the wrist and in the underarm, I had to just cut off a little bit of the edge. I couldn't get the full piece there, but I knew that because they were so full and gathered, it wasn't gonna make a difference and it really didn't make a difference. You would never know from looking at it. The other thing is I was sewing this when I was with my friends, half chatting, half paying attention to my sewing, and this is fabric that does not look very obvious what's the right side and the wrong side. And one of these sleeves I ended up sewing inside out. So the wrong side is on the outside, which you wouldn't know. And I'm looking at them now and maybe it's this one. I'm not even sure which one it was because they are really so similar. But the main problem was that I ended up with two of the same sleeve rather than like a right and a left. I had two rights or two lefts. I can't remember which it was. But that meant that when I was putting it into the shoulder seam, I had a bit of a pickle. And because it's not a hugely different shape from the front and the back of the sleeve, I decided, eh, I'm just gonna put it in as is. I'm sure it will be fine, close enough. This is already such a compromised project, I felt like that I really wasn't gonna worry about it. And I mean, personally, I can't tell which one is correct and which one isn't. They don't look exactly the same, but I don't know which one's the right one and which one isn't. And if you're looking that closely at my sleeves, you don't need to be. I do think this was definitely an effect of, like I said, not paying as much attention as I could have been or should have been because I was chatting at the same time, but still, I had a fun time sewing and I don't mind at all. The only other thing that I made in March was my peppermint pocket skirt. I did put a whole video up on that as well because that was my So Frugal 23 entry. I talk a lot more detail about what that skirt was like to make, but basically end result is I really love it. This is the skirt, it is another green. Like I said, I've been getting super into my green lately. This was actually also partly because on that sewing day we were meeting up on St. Patrick's Day, I was making my green sweatshirt. I felt like, actually, this is gonna be a really quick make. I should bring something else to work on just in case I finish it. And it seemed appropriate to make something else green at the same time, which I knew I wanted to make this anyway, but it just seemed like a fun opportunity. So I started this on that same sewing day. I didn't finish it that same day, but I did start it with my sewing friends. I love the fabric. This is a viscose linen noil fabric from Sew Me Sunshine. I really do love the weight of this kind of fabric, the drape, the movement. It is just really gorgeous. The slubby texture is really lovely as well. I have been really surprising myself with how much I have been wanting to wear this skirt already. I am in that kind of early spring where I live where the weather is still very cold in the mornings, it's still very cold in the evenings, but in the middle of the day when the sun is out, it is glorious, it feels really warm and lovely, and I wanna get all of my floaty, lovely skirts and dresses, I wanna get some skin out, but it's really not appropriate for me to be wearing this lightweight of a skirt and this short of a skirt in the mornings and in the evenings, but I've still been wearing it and I've still been living and not worrying too much about it, but it just tells me how much I know I'm gonna absolutely love wearing this when the weather properly starts to warm up. The thing that struck me about this particular skirt when I was looking at the hashtags, when I was looking for inspiration, is how many of the pictures people are tagging this skirt are not actually photos for this skirt. They are photos of a top or a jumper or a cardigan that they're making, that they've made, that they're just pairing with this skirt, which to me just speaks to the versatility of this skirt, that people are clearly wearing it a lot when they make it. And I think that's gonna be the case for me. I'm definitely gonna be making more of these skirts. I love the pockets, it's such a cool feature. I love the height of the pockets where I got it. I love where this sits on my waist and the length of the skirt. It's just honestly a pretty perfect skirt and I definitely will be wearing this a ton in the spring and in the summer. I also have some knitting works in progress to share. Now this one, I don't know if technically it even counts as a work in progress, but anyway, it's a tube of some knitting, it is what it is. But basically this is some of my yarn that I had left over from my 2021 advent yarns that I got from Made by Penguins. This is a DK weight merino wool, really lovely yarn, really gorgeous colors that I got of this as well. I have quite a bit of this left over. Some of it is proper full mini skeins and some of it's just little sections left over from a cardigan that I made with some of this yarn last year but I felt like I wanted to use the scraps to make some winter accessories. And I have a really good book that will tell me how I need to kind of draft that out, depending on what size I wanna make, just starting with the gauge that I'm getting with the yarn and with the needles that I'm using. So I just wanted to do a bit of a test stockinette stitch in the round with this, and just for myself to be able to know if I'm gonna make something with this in the future, how many stitches and all that stuff. So 
This is something that's going to be again really more for like next wintry season so I'm not going to be making anything with this now but it's just going to be a useful reference point for me when I'm planning to make some hats and gloves and mittens and things for the winter of 2023. The other knitting project that I've been working on are a pair of socks. Now I'm actually knitting two at a time for better or for worse. It's been an interesting journey I will say. Now this is the Daily Sock by Summerlee Design and I will say that I can't show you what this looked like at the beginning of April, the end of March because I've been working on it since then. But essentially I'd gotten to the heel. So this starts at the cuff. It has this really cute little cuff detail and then it's got this really interesting knitting pattern, this textured knitting pattern that has been super cool to make. I love the effect of it. It actually feels really lovely and kind of scrunchy on the inside. I think these are going to be really comfortable to wear. I have this really beautiful variegated yarn. It's different shades of blue. You can see here, this is again from Made by Penguins, but I didn't want to do just a boring old straight up vanilla sock, but I wanted to do something that would highlight the color change within the yarn, but not be too overpowering with the design that you'd miss it. And I feel like it worked so well for this. Now, what's interesting is this is one whole skein. It came from one big skein but I separated out into two halves, two balls, so that I could knit these two at a time. And it's interesting that I've ended up with two shades. So this one is definitely lighter than this one, which is interesting. When I look at these balls, these two halves, I mean, it's not really obvious to me that one is lighter than the other, but clearly they are. And I think it's just because one would be more from the outside and one was more from the inside when they were dyed. I don't, I don't know. I don't dye yarn, so I don't quite know how it works. But what I decided to do is once I'm getting past the heel and I'm getting to the foot, I've swapped them over so that way it will look like a matching pair if that makes sense. I mean it's clearly the same colors, it's just one is definitely lighter and one is definitely darker so we'll see how that goes. I'll give you more of an update at the end of this month because I've been working more on the heel and things but it definitely took me a while to get these to just cast on two at a time. Once they're on it's pretty straightforward to knit them two at a time but getting my head around casting on after I'd already done like the first half of the first sock and then I was going around to the second half of that first sock. If you've done that before you may know how much that was absolutely vexing me but maybe you're a more experienced knitter and it was no big deal to you but I tell you I could not remember how to cast on which I do without even thinking about it but because I was doing it in such an odd way and everything felt really cramped I yeah I had to put it down. I had to actually film myself casting on so that I could watch what I was doing and try to mimic it when I was casting on that part of the sock. It was mind bending, it was funny, but it is quite fun and satisfying to be knitting both socks at once. And I don't know if I'll do every time I'm knitting socks, but it was a fun experiment. And that was my February and March. I feel like when you put it all together, it is a fair bit of stuff, but everything did feel a little bit more slow and a little bit more sludgy. I feel like now that April's come, I have more headspace, my COVID fog is gone. I'm feeling more excited and getting really into my sewing projects coming up, some things I've already been working on. I'm really looking forward to sharing with you guys what I make in the month of April. If you did enjoy today's video, please make sure you give me a like. Please do leave any comments down below about your thoughts about my makes. Also, if you've got any comments for my Q&A, which will be coming out soon, please also make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you want to see more of my videos, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!